All right, back in the shop finally. Whew, boys, it's been crazy. Lots of things happening, but it's all good. I got to get this uh, 860 installed in here. We have to get this thing out to Jaws. He's going to build a custom pipe for it. It's going to be awesome. But we need to get this engine mounted up. I'm going to show you how everything fits. And we have to more or less, here, this is what's happening. This is the, the base plate, if you will, for that 800R motor. Usually there are two bosses on either side of this, and that's where your motor mounts are. So I shave those off, machine the bottom of this flat, good old JL, or I call him our head tech, but he doesn't do much other than just the odd thing like this, which is pretty cool. And he's always there for telephone support. But anyway, he machined the bottom of this, and on the bottom of this motor, there are these nice little places right here for studs that aren't really utilized on the application in the, in the rev, but we're gonna use them. It's pretty handy. So we machine that flat. It's gonna go on this engine plate right here. This is from Power Addiction Racing. Brad makes this, a, it's a generic plate basically, so there are no holes drilled in the bottom. So what we need to do is we need to put this engine together, line up the clutches, somehow try to mark the bottom of this base plate on that plate, figure out where these holes are, and then drill for the studs in the bottom of that. Now old Louie's got some pretty wonky eye thing going on here, one good for distance and one for short. Sometimes I get things a little screwed up, but I think, you know what, we're gonna be able to make that work. So, let's sew it together, get it in there, align the clutches, make some measurements. First thing we have to do is I've got this, the old crank in it, of course. So I'm leaving that on there because I need to install our clutches. That's sitting where it's supposed to be. I have had this in just for a rough fit and I know it fits. I don't want to score these nice new board cylinder up. It's going to do that. Because I'm excited to get this going. We have some snow coming. I have had to piece out or try to figure out what parts and pieces I need for this. Because I didn't get everything. I, it's not like I have a, a sled that I'm taking apart to put this in or from a donor sled. I bought parts and pieces to make all this work. So I'm doing my best. There we go. That's nice and flat. So what I'll do is I'll move that into the sled. Very gently, like. There. Now, I have put everything in. Everything does fit. Kind of fits almost nicer than the uh, original engine that was in this thing. It's a nice thing, you know, there maybe that these engine companies sort of worked off each other's designs, who knows, at some point. So it's working out well for me. So that's all nice and flat. That all fits in there. Or I'll show you guys a couple other things. I haven't tried these yet with the carb. Okay, so we have that. It's going to be just some rough sort of fitting. That's going to go there like that. On the Polaris, 
these carbs are even lower. So I was kind of worried about the back side of here. But as far as making an airbox goes, now let me see if my idea works. This is a turbo airbox from Boondocker. I saw this when we were shooting out there this fall for their Polaris application. And I was like, you know what? Boy, that really looks like it'll fit a carburetor. And look at that. It really does. Sort of comes close to this. I think that's the choke line. It is the choke cable. That's okay. We can make that work. I just wonder if this is going to fit in there. Oh, you know what? It's going to. Sweet. I'll have to carve out this right here, the old uh, airbox mount. And that's going to fit in there. Should be a little tight. I'll just have to trim a little bit up. And then my airbox or my uh, cold air intake will come out the other side. One of those. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. We got lucky there. It's a tight fit in there, even for the Polaris application when they're with that 600 motor in there. All right. Pitch goes out. It goes there. Long shaft. You look at this, it's uh, really tight in here, this clutch, but it's the same amount of room, more or less, as the IQR clutch. It's a really tight fit to get the IQR belt in there. Make sure we don't turn those. All right, so. There's the team tied secondary. I just want to make sure if we come over here. Still have to take the wiring harness out of this baby. But I want to make sure we have room for the recoil. That is just sort of flopped into place. Now let's measure up the clutch distance, see if we can get them right. Well, I thought we were in trouble. When we took measurements off the rev, I thought it was, uh, you know, use my wonky eyeball, it was 10 and a half inches from center to center, but it turns out that it was 10 and a quarter, which kind of saved our butts. Now we can use the screw rev belt in here and uh, get away with it. The team tied secondary is slightly bigger than the skidoo secondary, and the skidoo TRA clutch is slightly larger than the Polaris clutch. So we're just trying to make sure that we have it all right. I'm not quite sure, you know, we have to, our Senator centers are 10 and a quarter now, that's no problem. The Polaris belt was way too big on there. And I'm just gonna check out, I did a real time question on, uh, on uh, Facebook and I wanna see if anybody answered it. 
a little hard for guys. It's, it's a tough measurement, that center to center. Two comments. <laughs> 9.5. <laughs> I think people are guessing. Uh, how's nine, nine and a half inches? That sound good? <laughs> no. Okay, so we've installed the engine. The clutch is on. Secondary clutch is on. We've got our clutch alignment tool from SLP. They're at 10 and a half, or 10 and a quarter inches from what we could ascertain. And we've lined up the engine with a slight angle, keeping the engine sort of, the clutch pointed in such a way that when the engine really starts to power up, it'll, uh, it'll bend in a little bit, like it, every engine sort of does it. The primary clutch, the engine is sort of cocked so that it's out of angle a little bit, if that makes any sense, so when the power comes on, the clutch is aligned just perfectly. And that's the way we've done it. All we did was we took this handy little tool here, aligned it on our secondary clutch, and then you just take a measurement from the primary to this tool on the front and the back. So from distance from there to there, and then the same up at the front. So that gives us our proper angle of that engine when it's in there. We made it about an eighth, 16th or an eighth, pretty darn close, um, just to be on the safe side. So everything is in, we've marked it with a pen, pen marks aluminum pretty well. Now we're gonna take it out and try to figure out the bottom of that engine, imprint it on that plate and then drill our holes. Good times. Let's get that done. What's next? It's daunting, boys. It's a daunting task. I'm not going to lie. This isn't, uh, this isn't easy stuff to do, but it has to be done. Because I have the 800 Polaris engine in that little IQR, and it is a ton of fun. And uh, I can't imagine what this thing's going to be like with an 860 big bore in it. It might scare some people, maybe me, a little bit. Clutch out of there. There you go. Over there. There is a slight fitment issue with the water pump outlet, but we got that figured out as well. Nothing a grinder can't take care of. That's how we roll with grinders. No, I'm not prying on the case on the machine surface. Don't get mad. There we go. We've got that. Do we have enough of a mark on there? Can you see? I can't see, oh yeah, I see, pen mark there, side mark right there, that's the better mark right up at the front. Who's calling me? Who would do? Who would do that? It's my wife. Hold on. Hello. So she was a little tricky, boys. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. The only real way you could do this and have it perfectly uh, lined would be to do something like on, maybe on a CAD drawing or whatever. I have no idea. I don't know any of that fancy magical stuff that you guys use. Anyway, what we did was we took the bottom of the engine, the base plate. Sprayed it with spray paint, made ourselves a little marking sheet, glued it on here, and uh, lined everything up. We scored along the edge of the base plate with a, a pen. Now we're going to drill some holes, see if she lines up.
Just going to drill a pilot hole first. Get out of there. Now, Brad at Precision or uh, Brad at, what is that? Brad at Power Addiction Racing didn't have a template for this. So, we're on our own, boys. Making things happen here. Power Mods, Power Mods way. I did use uh, I did use a tape measure for some of this. But we don't want to get too complicated. <laughs> to go straight in. don't know what that is. It's very hard to find. It's metric. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get it out of here. <laughs> don't laugh at me. We built it the way that it don't come apart. Look at it. Hey, watch. Now, I didn't ream out these holes at all, boys. Not, you know what though? I should take that that paper off, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's it gonna do, Brent? Turn the fire? So that's gonna be good. I'm not gonna pry it on there, jam it on there right now because I need to bolt this to the engine, put the engine together, then we seat the whole thing on this plate, and then try to put the whole thing in the sled. And that is gonna be the topic of tomorrow's video. Actually, we're going riding tomorrow, but it's coming. So uh, stay tuned. The next step in this whole process is building up that 860 big bore from RK Tech. I gotta thank you guys for joining as usual. I gotta get an IQR dialed in for some powder riding. Sweet. <laughs>